that let my enemies triumph. Those who hope in you shall not be disappointed, but only those who wantonly break faith. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as you can tell from the wreath, this is the first Sunday of Advent, that season of preparation. We all know that for so many reasons, this will be an Advent like none other that we can remember. So at its outset, let's take a moment to focus, to calm ourselves. And as we prepare to celebrate these mysteries of Christ's love, to acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While well, you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye has ever seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for you. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of your ways. Behold, you are angry, and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All of our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There are none who call upon your name, who rouse themselves to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord.
from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account. For the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way, with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and it was God who called you to fellowship with the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Watch and wait. If these are the keynotes of Advent, it's easy this year to feel like we've been in Advent since about March. This year of the Lord, 2020, has had far more than its due share of watching and waiting. Watch the virus numbers. Watch the news. 
Watch the politicians. Watch the nation, sometimes in turmoil. Wait for the lockdown to be over. Wait for the next wave of infection. Wait for a vaccine. Wait for the election. Wait for the results of the election. Wait for acceptance of the results of the election. Wait for school to be over. Wait for family gatherings. Wait for travel. Wait for things to be just like they used to be. Wait. We're understandably tired of all of this. And our feelings may often echo the weariness of Isaiah in today's first reading. He's usually not quite that cranky, and he does get better as we go through Advent. But he expresses something we may be feeling ourselves. No matter what we do, it seems to find us stuck in the same place. Watch, wait, soon, maybe. Who needs more of that? How will we hear the Word of God this season and not feel it's more of the same? Well, we know that this Advent of 2020 will be like no other in our recent or even less recent past. Some of us find ourselves with more time on our hands than is usual this time of year. Yet, we find ourselves struggling to focus on things that matter or even to focus on anything at all. Many are busier than ever, working hard to feed and care for others, whether their own families or ours. Even as they navigate childcare, worry about their elders. People like this need to find a way to catch some moments of reflection. And there are many among us in despair over lost jobs that may never return, as they watch the bills mount with no idea what will come next. They need a reason to hope. They need the support and practical help of their friends and loved ones. For all of us, though, no matter what our situation may be, Advent can be the gift we need. If we remember that it's not one size fits all, or even as they say these days, one size fits most. <laughs> this year, Advent will be more personalized than it usually is. And for many among us, the stakes will seem to be far higher than in a normal holiday season. Now, Advent, the season, the liturgical season of Advent, ends with Christmas. The key to Advent, however, is understanding that it's not really about watching and waiting for Christmas. The journey we renew every year at this time does not end at the manger, but beyond, in what we cannot yet see and can scarcely imagine, a healed and whole creation transformed beyond even its original goodness into something where God is all in all. We call that seemingly distant place the kingdom or the reign of God. Ancient metaphor is rooted in the hopes of Jews who had lost their land and their freedom and wanted them back. Jesus uses that traditional language in his teaching, even though his kingdom, the kingdom of his Father, is far more expansive than the political hopes of an oppressed people. Though others called Jesus a king, as we did last Sunday, he never described himself as the king of the Jews. Pontius Pilate did that. Nor did Jesus promise a restoration of things as they had been before the land was conquered by Assyrians and Babylonians and Greeks and Romans. Rather, he taught as did the great prophets like Isaiah, who will be our trusty Advent companion. These prophets who raised their sights from the woes of their own day to point towards something beyond catastrophe and human failure. 
Jesus and the prophets teach us that liberation from oppression and injustice is not our final destination. Though if we're heading in the right direction, it will, it must, come along the way. Our destination is even better. A place where there will be no more frontiers between the dead and the living. No distinctions of race or class or nationality or anything else. At our far horizon, there will be a whole and free relationship between us, we human beings, and our Creator. We will join the perfect communion of the Holy Trinity itself. Now, that really does seem very, very far off. So in the meantime, we head to the manger with the shepherds and the magi, and then to the cross and the empty tomb with the faithful women. And beyond that, Christ is our guide. His teaching is the map. His example is the path. In Advent, as every day throughout the year, we hear his voice in the Gospel readings of the Eucharist. And his words are always there waiting for us in our private reading, our Lectio Divina. We build justice along the way by following his example, serving humbly as he did, putting little stock in worldly measures of privilege, fulfilling our vocations with generosity and hope. We already have everything we need then, and we even have the food we need to sustain us on a long journey. That food awaits us, prepared by the one who serves us his very self. Blessed are we, called to the Supper of the Lamb. My brothers and sisters, with all the Church, let us profess our faith and trust in God. I believe.
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now turn to the Lord, attentive to our own needs and those of our world. That the leaders and ministers of the churches be attentive to the needs of their people in this time of crisis. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those with political and economic power put the needs of the poor and the sick above all else. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our country seek reconciliation and rediscover the strength of common purpose. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer abuse, unjust imprisonment, or human trafficking find the care they need for body and soul. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those displaced and starved by war, those affected by natural disasters, and those fleeing persecution, find hope and care for their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are sick, and especially those who are near death, know the healing touch and life-giving promise of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, who sent your Son to a world in fear and darkness to bring healing and light, receive these our prayers and bless our Advent watchfulness. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Sunday collection, both here in church and online, will go for the support of Visitation Monastery, a presence of prayer, hope, and blessing in the diverse community of North Minneapolis. Oh, 
Pray, sisters, pray, brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We give the to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all that you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Donald our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that, rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks. Thanks.